Hey everyone! Guys, guess what? It is time for another fandom buzz. We are here for some more buzzy fandom ah, conversations. For those of you tuning in, fandom buzz is this new segment here where we just pretty much take the time to drink a beverage that is buzzy because of caffeine, alcohol, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and whilst we buzz about things that are part of our fandoms. And it ties in with the partnerships we have with Sips by, uh, which is a monthly tea subscription kind of subscription box. box that sort of, you know, asked if you know, we would review some of the tea and we thought, sure, why not? And combine and, those two things. And combine those two things of wanting to buzz about the fandoms and drinking things that are technically, you know, caffeine laden, or depends. The last Sips by box that we they got- They had a couple of decaf They had a couple of decaf ones and sort of show you like the caffeine levels and I'm just like give me the one with the most because that's there's no almost no point to this yeah apart from taste this is fandom buzz DC appreciation uh, okay. edition <laughs> we'll get to that in, in a bit but for now, for now box time. the tea shall so, be again, spilled comes in this um very so if yeah, so you subscribe to, to sips by you're gonna get like a like a nice little kind of box it's gonna have like a little kind of front cover so obviously. we're gonna do it the same way we did it the last time which is Mackie's gonna rifle through Rummage the box through and then Alexa's going to gonna, figure like, out like, what's what's, what's on the thing so it doubles as like a little cover and it also has like if you want to show them mm -hmm. oh and it says made for Alexandra not the city the girl <laughs> Lady. It has all the spoilers on the back, basically. Yeah. I want to start with uh, how thoughtful they are because it's a box full of tea, and Sips by will always give you a bunch of tea, uh, like kind of, a oh, reusable tea reusable bags. tea bags, uh, d because there's some loose leaf in there. And if you have some loose leaf at home, not so loose anymore after this. I would like to say. <laughs> so let's start with what is that one? Tea Fiori. Yeah, that's white. Thinking Guy Fiori, <laughs> but tea. <laughs> it's white. I rose. just ruined it. Low caffeine. It's a beautiful, soothing blend of white tea and rose petals. Oh. My favorite. I love rose tea. There you go. What do we got next? I don't know. You heard of Earl Grey? Here's some Earl Green. Earl Green Oolong Sips by Rishi. It's a medium caffeine tea. It's the Oolong version of the classic black tea Earl Grey blend. Mm. Uh, it has lilac in it. So Interesting. It's so it's Oolong lilac tea. and bergamot, basically. That's cool. All right. Tea head. Herbal. That one is strawberry blend. Strawberry blend. Caffeine free. The fruit tea. We thought we were going to be friends. Anyway. It's a fruit tea that basically is described as like eating delicious garden fresh strawberries and blackberries. All right. <laughs> and then. Black tea. That Manhattan, is Manhattan black. black. That's high caffeine. Yeah. It's caffeine rich and highly oxidized. Hello. It's great. It's great for a great city grind. A fuel for your happiest hour. I like how it says sip reasonably. In the, like I need a reason to sip. There's a little brochure here mm -hmm. for us two. Taiwanese tea. It's long tea, tea. Black tea, jasmine tea. Baojong tea. Yeah. So, so I guess what Sips by does is it sort of curates like a bunch of different kinds of teas. Based on what uh, flavor profiles you pick in their quiz. Because you take a quiz before they send you any boxes. So you May can I? choose what you prefer. It says for Alexandra. Kinda <laughs> cool. really gonna so, show them that. Well, I think it's kind of cool because I would like the one that says made for, you know, whatever my name okay. is going to be. So which, so which tea do you think you're going to try? I am going to grab... I already know which one I'm trying. The rose tea, I would like to think. Yeah. I'm going to obviously go for Manhattan black so we'll be back shortly after uh getting the tea steeped and we are back we're back with tea a little bit of tea some of it may have spilled <laughs> and not in the mine fun has way no creamer mine is uh creamy so how, how do you find the uh rose tea very refreshing i'd like to hope very it's not very refreshing it's very rosy rosy indeed well i like i like mine um this a sizable amount of caffeine in there nothing too like it's it's what tea should be. I'd like to think nothing like I feel like tea from Mackey should be. That's true. So it's got that cream kind of there. Oh, one might say that destroys the taste, but I'm just like no, no, no. I actually like it in milk sometimes. Yeah, it just it supports on the tea. it. It supports. But anyway, so this is Fandom Buzz DC edition, where we get to buzz about being in the DC fandom. I suppose would be the thing, and that's a that's broad, by the way. That is we. I personally know that that is huge. But I sort of wanted to capture today to sort of buzz about is well, we'll start with the very interesting question right not everybody just gets suddenly into dc there's a journey there somewhere so my question to you is what is the earliest memory of you liking anything dc at all like before you even knew dc was a thing what was the earliest dc thing that you can remember in remember. hindsight i honestly can't remember the title of it okay so there's two things i remember from my childhood <laughs> very vaguely mind you because these are not the type of things where like i watch them constantly on repeat the way i would do with other fandoms no but I distinctly remember watching two different live-action Batman movies. Oh, wow. Those. Okay, two. okay, yeah. There's two. I think it's Batman Returns. That's one. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton, still yes. the Batman, Yeah, right? so, so But that's that the be... second one. That's not the first yeah, one. Yeah, that's the second okay. one. So that, that's the one with um, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, that woman. that's why. And you liked that one. I did when I was a okay, kid. Awesome. But then it got superseded by 
I think it's Batman and Robin. George Clooney is Batman. Yeah, George Clooney. Th that is my earliest. Like when Mackie asked me this question, I actually had to think about it because I was like, I didn't grow up in the DC fandom. Like these are like superheroes, but like a very like far off concept to me. So these are like the two. I think it was because my dad. You know, dad likes watching. Them. My dad loves watching. <laughs> that explains everything. So I'm pretty sure. I love that's my father-in-law, but that makes total sense. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's how I ended up watching those two. Okay, okay. What did? But what did you, as a child, what did it, you like about it? It's funny because it's the same thing I enjoy about DC as an adult, which is the characters. That's what okay, actually okay. stands. Like I do, I do not, for the life of me, remember the plot of either movie. I just remember the the way the characters were enacted. That's about as far as that goes. Like I never watch anything animated. I never watch like. Growing up, I never watched any of those things. And then after that, the next thing I can remember is Smallville. Oh, hey! And Smallville. I didn't even watch the whole thing. Yeah, like, yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just a thing that I knew Shoot, about. yeah, the, oh, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and then after that, we skip all the way to adulthood. So clearly, I have not been in that band, like, I have not been in the fandom for quite as long. But you say you, you got attracted to sort of the characters, well, so I I'm sure remember... there's some shiny memory of just maybe like one frame where you're like, that's cool, I like that. Well, actually, in Returns, it's Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like for me, it's not even what they did in the movie, it was just... Michelle Pfeiffer was the cat, yeah, that exactly. was cool. Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy is actually something I have... Mother very, Nature. I have a very... Yeah, I don't know moment. why I have a very strong memory of this, but for some reason, I just remember her being Poison Ivy and Arnold Schwarzenegger and as the... the Arnold Schwarzenegger as I don't even remember his name, I just Mr. know he's the Freeze. villain. Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito was a... Oh my god, Danny DeVito, I love your work! <laughs> That's still my favorite line. But anyway, so those are my <laughs> those are my earliest like DC memories, as far as I can tell. Because the rest of them come in adulthood after Mackie explains some of the, which we'll get to later. Which we'll get to pretty um, much later. But what is yours then? If my my earliest DC memories were Saturday morning cartoons and weekday afternoon cartoons. I would okay. come home from kindergarten. We did make they'd make me take a nap, and my reward would be I wake up and there's cartoons. And every so often, whether it's a Saturday or the I forget what the what the time slot was, there would be the Super Friends. Super Friends and the Wonder Twins um, with their monkey Gleek. And the Wonder Twins would have go Wonder Twin powers activate and they would like touch fists and the, the, the invention of the fist bump prior to it being an actual fist bump. And one of them would be able to turn into um, animals and the other one would be able to turn into like random ice things. Right? And then Gleek was just a monkey. So does that mean that one was the cool twin? <laughs> It was the Super Friends. It was my aunt who was a huge fan of Linda Carter um, mm, Wonder Woman. As, as Wonder Woman. And I did manage to watch, like, aired some of those on TV. And she would kind of spin around and then transform. God, she's still pretty, like, in my mind and to this day. So there's that. Uh, Adam West and, and, oh. and Burt Ward as, as like, Zock Pow Batman. That's what I call him, Zock Pow. Well, because yeah. that's sort of what he is. And those are my earliest memories of DC. And then you could just kind of latch onto these things. And what I love, well, Super Friends being my favorite one. That was the the TV show where you got so much bang for your buck, like thirty minutes, and there were so many superheroes. So like you like your mind would. Uh, I could see that. You know, and Batman, and then Robin, and then Wonder Woman in her plane, and then Aquaman and the giant. Whatever he was writing at that moment, I don't know. There's the, the, the seahorse and no whale, and that he just just so many dudes. Clark obviously would super, you know, and that was and that was those were my earliest memories, and they sort of embed themselves into your head growing up. So I, I, I suddenly wonder, question to everybody: What was your first DC-ish memory? Which leads me to my next question: What was a DC element, like the element of the DC universe fandom genre that you know, like because of this, I'm a fan now. Like a real fan. <laughs> so this is actually going to tie into what I was saying earlier about how when I was an adult, Mackie is sort of the one who walked me through DC. Like, not in detail. It was more like, you know, this is like a general like thing. The one thing he had, a, like, I feel like it's because he had an inkling that that would be the thing that interested me the most. Or it was just really the only one I really liked to this day. True. He explained the entire, like, he simplified it, but he explained the dynamics of the entire Bat family. And when I say entire, I mean like everyone. So I know everyone by name, even though some of them I've never even read their <laughs> actual arcs. Like, That's true. Like, like I've never read Steph, I've never read Cassandra, but I know who they are because... We have their graphic novels. What essentially happened was one day, I don't know why, I, I don't know if I asked you or if you just decided to tell me. Because we were just fandom buzzing? Yeah. So he was like, oh, so let me tell you about the Bat family. And at, at that time, the only things I knew were Batman, Robin, Nightwing, and then Batgirl. And I didn't even realize how many Robins there were until that time. <laughs> until that time. And then he introduced me to everyone, introduced me to everyone. Oh, and Alfred, obviously. Which is just basically just me ranting for about yeah. two and a half hours, showing like random photos on the internet. And here's the like, sad part. Like, I didn't even actually read any of this until after I decided that I cared. 
<laughs> so I committed to this fandom before even actually experiencing this fandom. In hindsight, like a little later, after I had read like a little bit more, like I'd read some of the Robin stuff, I read a little bit of the Grayson, a little bit of the Batman stuff. I was just like, okay, fine. I'm, I, like I, I cemented it. <laughs> like it was, it's good. I still have so much catching up to do, but for the most part, that's like the one. For me, it was specifically the Bat Family. Like that was my in. The other thing that cemented me staying in it <laughs> is Black Knight. Like because I was like, where do I? What do I? What do? Yeah, where do I we read? start with comics? It's, it's, to and, me, it's always been very intimidating because there's so much of it, and that's a great thing, but also an overwhelming. And here's the thing: not gonna lie, Green Lantern. Growing up, everybody knows I am an unabashed sort of X Men fan. I was not a Green Lantern fan mm. at the time yeah. before reading Blackest Night because Green Lantern, his weakness, yellow. Seriously, the color yellow. Back in the day, so I thought, well, yeah, maybe I'll skip. N no hate, it's just not my thing. But then Blackest Night happens. Oh my god. Alexa asks, hey, what can I read? And I'm like, ah. I borrowed it from the library first because he was like, oh, you should try this one. He gave me a couple of Marvel ones because this was around the time when I was like, let me like read more comics and superhero stuff. Cut two, I read Darkest Night. And I'm literally like, oh my god, why? I feel like standing up and applauding. Like, that was the first time I had I, ever I read was, I, a comic book where I was like, I need to stand up and applaud this I, shit. I, I, I felt so good because that's exactly how I felt. I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't articulate it in words at the time, but after I finished the last page of Blackest Night, I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. And Alexa was like, I want to stand up and applaud. I'm like, those are my feelings. Yes. It's really that good. I loved it. I mean, it's such a great golden pre 52, sorry, but for the angst, pre 52 age. It brings so many characters together. And like, it's, it's one one of those ensemble things where yeah, everybody well, it's, it's, shows it's, up. Big thing in comic books apparently is that they, they tie together every single comic book ever into one of those sort of joint big large title events. The basic story of, of the Green Lantern Blackest Night kind of series is that mm. there's a lantern core for every color, but yeah. then the Black Lantern core uh, revives dead heroes and makes them technically zombies and they mm. want to kill everyone and anyone that they kill gets recruited into the core. And they become terrible, so horrible. So it's like terrifying and heartbreaking, but it's, also it's, amazing. It's like it's like the DC space zombie apocalypse, basically. And um, there's and so many characters too. And who doesn't love a zombie apocalypse? And since these are lanterns, it's it's insane. Basically. Right, um, and so cut to the point where we're running out of lanterns. Gee, let's use some other people and recruit them. I wonder who's Wait. available for recruitment in the other lantern corps. Anyway, so. Uh, to jump off of that, obviously Black Knight was also one of my moments where I'm just like, yep, this is it. I'm here in it forever. And you know what? I am a Green Lantern fan now. Thank you very much. I started out really liking DC. Again, it, this was Friday night cartoons. Right after X-Men, they would air back, you know, in Manila. They would air um, uh, Batman the Animated Series. Oh. To this day, uh, the animated universe, any animated universe that DC puts out on the small screen is murdering it so hard. Batman the Animated Series, Batman Beyond, by the way, which I think is super is awesome. So, and so that was that was sort of like my thing. Where the minute they did um, Batman uh, Beyond, so Batman the Animated Series took off. They tried to do Superman, that worked pretty okay, but then they sort of retired a little bit. They tried Batman Beyond, not necessarily in that that order, but then also the Justice League came out, mm, yeah, yeah. and they did something insane because one assumes that they tie the entire TV universe together. The Justice League. Uh, sort of uh, t uh, series crossed over with Batman Beyond mm. because it's the same Batman it's Bruce it's it's Bruce you know it's Bruce Timm's like world and uh, Kevin Conroy is the same voice everybody loves Kevin Conroy as the Batman mm. voice he is the Batman TV voice in, in all of the Batman video games and so from there same universe cross it over I'm in like anything almost that, uh, that that this is the part of the dc that cannot go wrong for me and and they haven't they have right now on the dc streaming platform they have young justice they finally continued it and that's great too it's also sort of an elseworld ish mm. it's not the same continuity as justice league and batman beyond but it's just really so good so those are the things that sort of hooked me as, as a fan the, the era of blackest night also was the era where nightwing and the birds of prey with barbara gordon as oh, oracle yeah. that's the one I'm sort of came yet, out which sort of evolved into sort of tim drake and cassie so basically um dick and babs are my forever they're also like, my elements, otp <laughs> right so I mean, big graphic novels like Black Knight got me into the fandom. But what made me stay, and I love that part, would be—I uh, love that part—would be uh, Dick and Babs, uh, Tim Dr Tim Drake and Stephanie Brown, who were the subsequent Robin and Batgirl mm -hmm. uh, at the time. Well, Red Robin, Black Canary from Birds of Prey, uh, mm -hmm. from Gail Simone's run, um, loved that. Okay, cool. So now, three favorite DC things that um, we have. That we have. My you Dick Grayson Funko Pop. This Nightwing shirt, because. Don't 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 you have a, a hoodie? I do, also. <laughs> K 
Can you tell who's my favorite? Gee. Can you? Can you? I don't own anything personally, but I guess I'm just gonna <laughs> cop out and say that obviously I'm going to pick all of the comics that Maki owns. Yeah. That have to do with the Bat Family specifically. Right, and, and and we do have a lot of that on digital, um, and that is one of my favorite things too, is, is sort of my graphic novel collection, but I do want to focus a little bit on, obviously you saw Blackest Night over there. <gasps> you know what? I should have said this. I forgot. What? Batman Nightwalker. Like I was saying, Batman Nightwalker. This is my favorite of the DC Icons books so far, just because I think Mary Lou's take on teen Batman, teen Bruce Wayne actually, is one of my favorite things that I've read in a very long time, because it felt realistic to me so i love it right my so one of my favorites not in maybe probably ascending order would be uh my three wonder woman things i only have three wonder woman things so i have uh libra dugo's um dc icons book that she'd signed off uh, to me and alexa our blu-ray of the wonder woman uh uh, movie. One thing I love about the DC, even some choice shots from the Justice League movie, there's something about seeing these heroes that make you go, oh my god, those are my heroes. Because when I see the Marvel heroes, and I love them, I just think, ah, these idiots. But then when you see these DC, you know, kind of there's superheroes, just they very feel like they're, 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 they're gods among, uh, they're gods among us, right? And that's, and that's the, that's kind of the ploy about it. And, uh, my Wonder Woman bracelets. Mm -hmm. Because these are super cool. And they're awesome. Segwaying into sort of the movies, we've got the graphic novel collection. Best Buy actually does this, is they take a graphic novel and they'll take the animated movie and they'll make a package out of it. So this is Batman uh, Under the Red Hood. So again, because we love the Bat family, this one's about Jason. It's got the, it's got the DVDs in the back. So that's kind of cool. Batman The Dark Knight Returns and The Death of Superman, which is ironically one of the first books that I had read. Then, speaking of the movies, which we want to move on to. Glad we're going to talk about movies because I have things to say. Right, so they, they released these two. So this is the, again, The Death of Superman. Apparently I, I, I doubled down on that. You're Relic of like, my childhood, yeah. I guess, because I do have a book somewhere back home. And, and they come free with like little figurines. So this is the Justice League versus Teen Titans. Teen Titans, the Judas Contract, that which was is good. harrowing. That was, that was good, but like um, terrifying. John Constantine is hiding. <gasps> He's about to show you. This is my favorite, one of my favorite DC animated films. Right, because this is Justice League Dark, which was a New 52 creation, I'd like to think. I could be wrong, but um, Doesn't fun. Doesn't matter either way. It was great. I, I like that there was like a Justice League that was like, we deal with all the mystical crap. Yeah, it was uh, so cool. And it's just like characters that you normally don't encounter very often. Or like who would put um, Etrigan the Demon, John Constantine, Zatanna, Swamp Thing, and Boston Brand you know, the dead man, in one team with Batman. And of course, the first one that sort of started the collection over that was would really be good. Batman Bad Blood. So but Batman, also I'm biased because... Because Nightwing's on here. And so it's sort of, sort of like a team up between Nightwing and you've got Batwing and Batwoman sort of figuring out how to survive without Bruce. And uh, that was pretty cool. Just a couple of semi-honorable mentions okay. because they come with like mini graphic novels and they're fun to collect. And I think this may be the end of my collection, but Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, which was pretty cool. I like that movie. And then Batman Gotham by Gaslight. So they have like free little graphic novels on the inside, roughly cool. the size of these Blu-ray. I've watched quite a few of the animated movies. I haven't watched the animated series, but movies- Which are all streaming on D the DC uh, platform, by the way, yes, right now. Yes, which I'll link down below so you guys can see what that's about. Sign up. But one of my other favorites is Flashpoint. Ooh. There is a movie, <laughs> um, there's a movie, I can actually throw that in and understand what that reference means. Um, there's a movie entirely about Flashpoint and that's centered around the Flash. Flashpoint in a nutshell is Barry decides to save his mom from dying. Yep, which changes and everything. And screws everything up. It's, it's so good. It's really good. I also want to randomly shout out, I forget what the actual title of the movie is. Ninja Bat Ni one. Bat Batman Ninja, Batman, Batman I, I don't Ninja. remember what the title is. We'll just put the picture of it here. But essentially, it's basically like everyone gets thrown back. Well, not everyone. Yeah, everybody gets tossed back in time. And it's a, it's a part of a villain's plot. That's how they all end up tossed back in time and it is and it's, just it's in complete jeopardy it's the it's the it's like just fun to watch it's bananas <laughs> like yeah it really is it's so japanese it's, it's with, it's, with every single thing it, that happens it is it. it is so on the nose but like so you wouldn't fun, even though. believe but yeah so if you like like just turn your brain off and watch it mm -hmm. it's great i mean um, it was just fun for what it was yeah because basically. it's the entire bad family stranded in time in feudal japan before we go sense. to the last segment i just want to do a couple of other quick Shout out. You have to talk about the Aquaman movie because I did not expect to enjoy that movie I as much like, as I did. Aside from Wonder Woman, which I think is also extremely epic and well done. Yeah. And Justice League, which I thought was really fun, contrary to what like I was expecting. <laughs> Freaking yeah. Aquaman 
was like a revelation. I don't know how, but I swear, like I walked in and I was like, oh, it's Aquaman, it's fine. Like I, like I, I enjoy Aquaman for what he is, especially as yeah. a part of the Justice and, and, League. And, and I knew that I was already like liking Aquaman and I would enjoy his film because Jason Momoa is spelled the entire difference. They reimagined Arthur to be a little bit more relatable than sort of like the earlier um, yeah, incarnations. Yeah, because I, Arth I prefer that incarnation. Yeah, because because Arthur Arthur, Arthur Curry wasn't a bad character. I mean, he was no, pretty. No, he was he was, he was solid. cool from the start. Anyway, yeah. people he's got a bad rap, and people you know it's all those meta jokes about him talking to fish, that kind of deal. Mm. But then there's Jason Momoa. <laughs> Anyway, that movie's really great. If you haven't watched it yet, it's a fun time. Yeah, it's so very we well just, done. We just recently got it on iTunes. It's amazing. And I also quickly wanted to say, I did mention Smallville, but there are a couple of other TV shows. The CW has a lot, but the only ones that I have ever watched more than one episode of are yeah. Legends of Tomorrow, that's one, which is basically just this ragtag team ends up becoming a team and having to travel through time to do the right thing. And then The Flash, which I mostly enjoy just because I like seeing the characters interact with each other, so I don't watch that one so much for like the story. And, well, I don't, I'm you not gonna mention- You I'm mean not... before it moved to the CW? <laughs> yes, I was gonna mention a show that Mac and I loved when it was still on, I think it was CBS. Lo because it was great. Loved, it was so good. It was so good. Like the writing and, it's and not, the themes. It's just been CW fine now, so it's, it's, like, it, it's not that it's not appealing, in, in no, the yeah, CW it is about its own sense, thing, but but I but loved how uh, it was literally another universe. It was so good, uh, and we're talking about Supergirl, obviously. Oh, Supergirl! It was such a great. Yeah, the the. I will say the one thing the CW Grant. gave me is Superman on that show. That is the one thing the CW did for me. I, Tyler Hoechlin is one of my favorite. Uh, Superman. Me too. Now Cavill has his own thing. Obviously, Chris Reeve is everybody's favorite, but mm -hmm. but Tyler Hoechlin, man, holy right? crap, he plays a perfect Clark Kent. He doesn't just look like him. He is. I. He does yeah. such a good. Job. Anyway, I also. Do you like how I keep going up with things? <laughs> I was expecting this. Well, there's there's the other thing that I forgot that actually. I think Mackie is definitely the one who brought it into my life. I don't think he remembers this. There is a Justice League game that he and I used to play together. Oh, the Justice, yeah, well, okay, so DC's video games uh, exist. Well, you, I know you like the Batman Arkham ones. So, yeah, so definitely the Arkham games. But there is a there is a PlayStation 2 um, side-scrolling beat-em-up called Justice League where you it's get to so pick between sort of Batman You get basically and, different pairings. Yeah, you, you know, you get to pick between... Uh, there's always, like, a bruiser and there's always, like, a thing, so it's either... Yes, who's the bruiser? Wonder Woman or Superman, usually Superman, and then there's Batman, Huntress. I forget who else you get to pick. I have this distinct memory of Mackie and I like walking through like the scene, right? And he's like jumping around and jumping throwing around. batarang. Meanwhile, I see just, a car and I'm like, she's just taking cars and throwing <laughs> it at like the bad guys. And I'm just like, well, you know what? Everybody has their own aesthetic when fighting crime. Those are all my um, random shout outs that I remembered. It's a lot of shout outs, but but the real excuse um, you who indoctrinated me into all of them. Literally every single one of those things is because of him. It like none of them were me discovering it on my own and i wouldn't even consider myself like a huge dc fan but then when you when it, but then when i look at how deep the fandom has hooks in me i'm like oh i guess i am a fan right right Thanks. because because like i said i i always sort of identify the x-men i always kind of loved marvel a little bit more but when i realize it it's dc that sort of makes me go oh my gosh heroes you know what i mean not that Again, that's nothing against the Marvel. Don't people. worry, that, that'll their, have its time. It's just I swear to God, I see, with the exception of maybe Steve Rogers, and even then because of all the jokes. But when you see the cape fluttering sort of in the wind, and then the tights, and then the red boots, you know the day is gonna get better. Or when you're in a dark alleyway, and then suddenly you see like the shadow, and like people just start dropping dead, you know you're gonna go home safe. I'm just trash for the bad family. That's really all it is. I mean, I sat through Lego Batman, guys. <laughs> Like that that's how dedicated I am to the Bat family. <laughs> Shout out bad. to the Lego Batman. But anyway, anyway, this episode of Fandom Buzz was inspired by a recent experience at, at Book, Book Expo. Uh, at Book Expo, um, where the DC was able to DC Inc., which is the imprint for uh, graphic novels targeted at kids and young adults. It's DC Inc. and DC Zoom. And DC Zoom, yeah. Um, where they invited us to a press preview type event. And it was really fun. And we talked about that more in our Book Expo Hall. Hall. But we wanted to quickly show you guys what they have like coming up. Yeah, What's... because be, because when we Just saw, because we're so excited about it, and it's, I mean, it's DC, and we're buzzing about it clearly. Yeah, and to sort of tie it back up, right? You always remember your first memory of what was your earliest DC thing. Some kids are gonna get handed these little kind of booklets. Like some kid is gonna get Swamp Swamp Kid, and he wouldn't even know because it's kind of drawn well, it's kind of quirky and funny. He's not gonna know that that was a Swamp Thing mm. thing. Um, you're gonna have Superman of Smallville, right? So kind of like a young Clark Kent. And, and my personal favorite of what's coming out, Dear Justice League, where a bunch of kids 
sort of text and email like the Justice League and they mm -hmm. kind of some kids are gonna get these and this is gonna be their first memories and DC's doing that just to get new kids to introduce them. Or tweens and teens are gonna have some uh, female heroines to look up to. Which is great. So let's start Black with Black Canary. Written by Meg Cabot. Mm -hmm. uh, we got you got Mira Tidebreaker, which is by Daniel Page. Cami uh, Garcia and, and Gabriel Pic uh, Piccolo mm -hmm. who, are, who are doing this. Harley Quinn. Written by Mariko Tamaki. And then Under the Moon by Lauren Miracle. This is outside of, you know, the DC Icon series because that's a whole different thing. Those are actual novels. These are graphic novels. And and that this if these two imprints, you know, for for DC Inc. and DC DC is really Zoom, exciting, right? Basically, are getting these kids to have these memories, and they're gonna for, for all we know they're gonna stick with it. For all we know they're gonna be like move on to other stuff too. But but either way, richer stories. Uh, b devoid of you should have read this, you should you know all of that crazy pressure. Oh, and pressure. there are more. Those are not the only ones. They're doing, Which ones? Are, are, um, they're doing are... Beast Boy. They're doing Gotham High. They're and your doing personal Bad favorite. Girl. They're doing. They're doing Oracle. Yes, they're doing Oracle. For I was me. gonna say Bad Girl and Oracle because Bad Girl is Cassandra's, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. They're that's doing so Bad Girl. Cool. Doing... And my personal favorite, they're doing a Dick Grayson one. So I'm gonna insert the cover because it's just too pretty not to. And aside from Robins that, for her. Bat girls, girls for, for you. Me. <laughs> a little bit of Oracle in there. And Alfred in the middle. <laughs> and always Alfred Pennyworth. Always uh, Alfred Pennyworth. Speaking of DC icons, they're actually also turning two of them into graphic novels so as well. So Night there's going to be Batman, Nightwalker, and Wonder Woman. So basically, the two uh, uh, books that we pulled out um, yeah, so are going to be. It's like so novels. exciting. It's such a great collaboration that they're doing with the artists and the authors and the characters that are already part of the DC canon. And we're so excited about all of it. So this is why we're doing a fandom buzz entirely about DC, even though I thought I was not going to have anything to say again. The, the <laughs> Never happens, apparently. <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and, and I, I, you know, I limited this, this thing to sort of four insightful questions because that's just how you kind of get buzzing, right? Where yeah, did clearly. It, where did it start? What got you hooked? What's your favorite thing right now? And, and uh, what are you buzzing about the most? And this is what we're buzzing about the mm -hmm. most. We cannot wait to blast through all of these. You guys need to tell us if you are a DC fan, what, what got you started? Yeah, or who's your we'll, favorite we'll, character? We'll post whatever the you want. We'll post the four questions below. But feel just free sort of to just like talk anything DC really try not to be spoilery or at least put a spoiler warning because I am not I have not actually read a lot of the DC stuff we're excited to have been able to bring you another fandom buzz about something we're very excited about and look forward to doing the next month's installment also the teas were really good I finished pretty much yeah, all the teas, mine. Teas pretty good. Um, so thanks to sip to buy again for sponsoring that box if you want more details about them also in the description of this video and we look forward to uh, buzzing more about our fandoms in the next one